In the last lecture, we learned how to create an array in JavaScript and how to access and manipulate an array's element. Now, in this lecture, let's talk about some of the methods which we can use on array in order to add and delete elements from an array. So, let's again start by creating the person's array. And to this, let's assign three elements. So, John, Mary and Mark are the three elements of this person's array. Let's also log this person's array in the developer console. So, persons. Let's save the changes and this array has been logged here. Now, let's say we want to add a new element to this person's array. So, let's try to do something like this. So, first, let's get access to this person's array and to this, let's provide an index. So, three. So currently this person's array has three elements. First element is at zeroth index, second element is at first index, and third element is at second index. Now we want to add a new element at third index. Okay, so let's say we want to add a new element called Steve. Now let's log this person's array again and let's see if this element has been added at that index. So if we save the changes, you can see a new element has been added. So this is one way of doing that. Or the other way is by using a method called push. So we can say persons dot push. Okay. And let's say we want to add an element, maybe Sarah. So in this way, this push element, I mean, this push method will add a new element at the end of the array. Okay. So let me give a comment here. Okay, let's log this person's array once again and let's see if this new element Sarah has been added. So if I save the changes, you can see Sarah has been added to this array. Okay, so the push method is used to insert an element at the end of the array. And with the help of push method, you can push or add more than one elements at a time. So let's say we also want to add Mike. Okay, so if if I save the changes now, then these two elements should be pushed, pushed at the end of the array. As you can see here, Sarah and Mike has been added to this person's array. Just like push method, we have another method called unshift. And this method adds new elements at the start of the array. So let's say persons dot unshift. And let's add a new element maybe Jonas. Okay, now let's log this person's array after this statement. Now if I save the changes, you can see that a new element Jonas has been added at the start of the array. So unshift method adds a new element at the start of the array. And just like push, you can pass more than one elements if you want to add you know, if you want to add more than one elements to the array, you can pass that here. So with Jonas, let's also pass maybe Josh. Let's save the changes and you can see Jonas and Josh had, has been added at the start of the array. All right. So we can use push and unshift method in order to add new elements to an array. Now let's see how to remove elements from an array. Now, in order to remove elements from an array, we have a method called pop. And this method removes an element from the end of the array. Okay, and it will also return that removed element. Okay, so let's say persons dot pop. So it will remove the last element of this person's array from this array. And it will, it will also return it. So let's first log this person's array and let's see if the last element has been removed. So the last element currently is Mike. So after using this pop method, let's now log this array. And now you can see Mike has been removed from this person's array. Okay, so this pop method removes an element from the end of the array and it also returns it. So let's create a variable and let's call it X. Okay, so this pop method will remove the last element from the array and it will return that element. And we are storing that returned element in this variable x. 
So if I log X, you will see that Mike has been logged here. And this is the element which has been removed from this array. Okay, so this pop will remove an element from the end of the array and it will also return that element. And just like pop, we have another method called shift and it removes an element from the start of the array and it also returns that element. So again, on this person's array, let's call this shift method. Okay, and let's log this person's array after this line of code. Let's save the changes and currently the first element is Yonis. Now if I save the changes, you will notice that Yonis has been removed from the array. So this shift method removes an element from the start of the array and it also returns the element. So let's store that returned element in a variable. Let's call it Y and let's log this Y. Okay, if I save the changes, you can see this pop method, I mean this shift method removed, removed this Yonis element from this array and it also returned that element. We are storing it in this variable y and then when we are logging this variable y, it is logging Yonis. Alright, so these are the four important methods to add and remove elements from an array. Now let's talk about one more method and that is index of. So the index of method returns the index of an element in an array. Let's see that with an example. So on this person array, let's call this index of method. And to this, uh, let's pass Mary. So let's say we want to know at which index this Mary is stored in this person's array. So here let's pass Mary. Okay, now this index of method will return the index number where this element is present. So let's store it in a variable. Let's simply call it i and let's log this i in the developer console. So console.log i. Let's save the changes and here you can see it is returning 2. So this Mary is present at index number 2. So Joss is at 0, John is at 1 and Mary is at 2. And that's what this index of method has returned. So index of method returns the index of an element in an array. Now, if the value we are passing to the index of method does not exist in the array, then it will return minus one. For example, let's copy this and let's use it here. And let's say uh, we want to know the index of maybe Jonas. Okay, now Jonas is not present in this array now because we have removed it, right, using this shift method. So now in this array, we don't have an element called Jonas. So in this case, if the index of is not able to find the index of an element which we have passed to it, it will return minus one. And let's call this maybe J. And let's log J here. Let's save the changes. And here you can see it has returned minus one because in this array, there is no element called Jonas. That's why it has returned minus one. Okay, so the index of method will return the index number of an element in an array if that element is present. Otherwise, it will return minus one. And that's why the index of operator can be used to test if an element is present in an array or not. Okay, for example, let's say, let's create a variable and let's call it maybe index. And to this, on this person's array, let's use this index of and to this, let's pass Steve. Okay, now we know that this index of will return minus one if this element Steve is not present inside this person's array. If it is present, then it will return the index number of that element, right? So here, let's use if and else. So let's say if index is greater than zero that means this index of has you know found this steve element so that's why the at that time the value of this index will be greater than zero right in that case we want to log a message saying that 
Steve is stored at index and then index number. So we are storing that in this index variable. Okay. Otherwise, let's say console.log Steve is not present in the array. Okay. Let's save the changes. And here it says Steve is stored at index 4. Okay. Now let's check one more thing. Let's change this capital S to lower S just to check if this index of is case sensitive or not. Okay. So now if I save the changes, it says Steve is not present in the array, but we can see that Steve is present in this array. But since this index of is case sensitive here, the first letter of Steve is lowercase and in the array, the first letter of Steve that is S is in caps. So since index of is, you know, case sensitive, that's why it has returned minus one. And that's why this message has been logged. Okay. All right. So this is all from this lecture. Now, before wrapping up, wrapping up, I just want to show you one more thing. In JavaScript, an array can store a value of any type. Okay. It is not like if you are creating an array of numbers, it can store only numbers. It's not like that. And to prove this, let's create a John of, I mean, John array. And inside this array, let's have a string. So let's say name is John. Let's have a number. Let's say he is 25 years old. Let's also have whether he is married or not. So let's set, let's uh, have this value false. Let's say we don't know the gender of John. So here let's use undefined. Okay. And we can also have null here. And if I save the changes, you will see that JavaScript is not throwing error. Okay. That means in an array in JavaScript, we can store any type of value. Okay. JavaScript arrays are not strongly typed. You can store any type of value in an array in JavaScript. So this is all about array. If you have any question related to array, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.